from around the globe. It's the Cube covering Google Cloud next on Air 20. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Dave Vellante and you're watching the Cube's continuous coverage of Google Next on Air. Nine weeks of cloud content. It was just a buffet of content. It started out with kind sort of industry trends, we got into productivity, infrastructure, deep dive in security, analytics, database, app modernization, cloud, AI, and we're wrapping up the nine weeks with business application platform. And with me is Amit Zavery, who's the general manager and vice president of the business application platform at Google Cloud. Amit, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. No, definitely. Thanks for having me, Dave. You're welcome. So tell me more about this, this role and you know, kind of your swim lane, if you will. No, definitely. Very, I think, uh, as, as you can imagine, with especially all this digital transformation getting accelerated uh, due to COVID, it's a huge amount of demand and interest from customers to be able to build applications, integrate them, and modernize systems and automate all of them very quickly and easily in a cost-effective manner. So that has been driving a lot of the thinking at Google for quite a few years already, but I think it got a little more accelerated with some of the work we've been doing previously with our stack around API management, no-code app development, automation uh, capabilities in our, in our platform as well. And we're bringing a lot of these things together in, in an in a, in a, in a offering so that customers can take advantage of a lot of the innovation in this space and improve the digital you know, uh, transformation and innovate quickly as well. So that's what we've done uh, with business application platform. We're providing capabilities for any kind of developers, be it the technical user who has a lot of co programming experience, as well as the other spectrum, which are the citizens developers who don't really have any kind of uh, software engineering background, but want to be able to build applications and automate and uh, processes very quickly and easily. So we want to provide them all the tooling and capabilities so that they can do that uh, and be more effective than they would otherwise be. I, I want to ask you about digital transformation. I mean, obviously it's a word that's thrown around, a phrase that's thrown a around a lot, and it's a, there's a spectrum of what it means to people. I was talking to somebody the other day, and this obviously will resonate with you with your background, and, in, in, in enterprise apps, but they were talking about an ERP system that was you know, f put in 15 years ago, bef before iPhone, yeah. you know, before cloud, and to that, to that and it's, as you know, those systems are fossilized, yes. uh, and, and the business has changed dramatically, but the ERP system hasn't, and, and to them, digital transformation was basically you know, upgrading the system. Yeah. Uh, and so, but, but obviously to Google and your, your role, it's, it means something much different, doesn't it? It's a lot more, right? I think no doubt having a digital application, no doubt is important, it's a good starting point. But as you said, some of the systems are pretty old and they're not connected together between different parts of the business. And there's a huge amount of manual processes and there's a lot of, uh, I would say, disparate pieces which never come together if you don't really put a well thought out uh, digital transformation project or an implementation around it. So a lot of times all these businesses, when they're connecting things together, they do need a platform to kind of bring their business processes, uh, their workflows, their applications, and the interaction between different users, be it external and internal, into a more and more automated system. And that's really where digital transformation really shines and improves a lot of the ability for customers to compete as well as meet their customer demands uh, and be more effective than otherwise they would be. And cloud is critical there, but it's connecting to an ecosystem. So I want to ask you about your, your strategy of, of the business application platform. And, and of course, Google's known for great tech. Uh, it's, it's very open, a lot, of, a lot of downstream contributions. You think about you know, Kubernetes and Anthos. So yeah. how, does, what, how would you describe your group strategy and how does it dovetail with, with Google Cloud overall? Yeah, no doubt. I think the cloud is kind of the central theme underneath the covers, right? So it does run on a multi-cloud and a hybrid mechanism. So that is available anywhere, as well as you have choice of and flexibility of deployment. Uh, it's also uh, platformed on top of Anthos. So you have that advantage of multi-cloud, as well as support for all the different systems you might have both on-prem, as well as in uh, various other cloud providers uh, as well. And the other things we're doing is we're taking advantage of a lot of the AI ML capabilities, a lot of our data analytics capabilities, and bringing a lot of those underlying technologies and abstracting it out through a SaaS-based offering on business application platform. So the customer perspective, they want to build an application. They use, we recently acquired a company called AppSheet uh, as start of this year. 
so they can easily now use AppSheet to build those applications without writing a single line of code. And then if you create uh, that application, it provides connectivity to also a lot of other systems out there, be it applications like SAP, Salesforce.com, but also a lot of legacy systems uh, in-house in or custom systems you might have built and provide connectors to that. And then it allows you to now monetize and take systems and provide APIs so that you can now extend it and bring it out into the, uh, to the partner community as well as customers to be able to build applications around that as well. So it connects all these things together, takes advantage of the Google Cloud and the ecosystem we have built and provides you uh, customers and users much easier way to kind of uh, build and deliver applications and automation on it. Okay, so that makes sense as to, to terms of why you acquired, made that acquisition. But I want to talk about uh, no-code development. It's something that, that you've been talking about quite a bit lately. Tell, tell the audience, what is no-code uh, development? Why do we need it? Yeah, I think if, the, if you look at some of these reports nowadays, I mean, there's a limited amount of capacity and capabilities IT can provide. And for complicated and very uh, large systems, you of course need IT to kind of make your business efficient and implement a lot of the systems together. But there are a lot of other applications which departments and line of business users want to use and build, and they can't wait around for IT. And there, I think if you look at some of the reports from Gartner, for example, there are going to be four times more developers inside, outside IT than they are going to be in IT. And those folks are not going to be software engineers, they're not professional programmers, and, but still they need efficiency and automation and application development tools. This is where no code really brings a lot of value. So tools like AppSheet, which we acquired, which is a market leading no code uh, uh, development platform, makes it very easy for anybody without any experience writing any code or building applications. They can point click and start building an application and be effectively produce something which they can collaborate and use between different users inside the company or outside. Uh, without uh, spending a lot of months and time to deliver that. And that's why the no-code application platforms are becoming very popular because it does make your business more efficient, makes your business more automated, is cost-effective, uh, and it's very productive, right? So mm -hmm. that has been the trend now more and more, and we speak to a lot of, especially nowadays, if you look at telehealth, you look at, uh, say, if you want to do mortgage lending, you want to build an app easily, quickly, without having to wait around for it. Uh, you are interacting with a lot of people through digital mediums now. And instead of paper, you're using a lot of digital tools. And that's why I think this no-code uh, platform become much more important and powerful and usable in this mechanism as well. Okay, well, I think it's important to point out, we're talking about no-code here, not low-code, no-code, yes. there's a difference. There's a big difference. I think, uh, the, see, the low-code was kind of the interim stage where customer uh, tools uh, which are coming out into the market were available to make it a little easier at, for development, uh, but not enough to kind of uh, democratize it for everybody. With no code, you are now allowing and opening it up to a lot more vaster community of users who can also build applications and take advantage of a lot of technology innovation happening in the platform like cloud and other things as well. The reporting is another good example where you want to be able to build dashboards. Uh, quickly and easily without again writing code. So the no code becomes a lot more important and usable uh, for this kind of needs. So I wonder if we could stay on this for a minute. You've used the example of programming a VCR. Many of us remember how difficult that was you know, early on. Uh, and now it's just you talk to it and it works. It, 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 that's, you use that as an example of what no code is like. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, I think it's uh, basically, it should be very natural, right? Uh, I think when, you, when we used to program uh, VCI, you had to read some manuals, you had to read some code, you had to kind of go through the whole process. And I don't even know how many of our audience nowadays even know about that or even think about it anymore. <laughs> so it makes us all very dated, but it was a very cumbersome process. And then you would worry about whether you recorded it or not, and then you got it on the right time, and then you get the right show, and then you end up deleting the wrong things or whatever may be the case. A lot of those things are now getting abstracted and simpler in terms of the no-code development where if you are looking for a particular uh, application interface, if you are looking to build, uh, uh, say, a mortgage lending app, a lot of those building blocks are already available to you. You're kind of making it uh, specific to your need, but really using a lot of the building blocks and get you the final, final solution versus learning about wiring everything yourself with a lot of pieces of code in there. So that's, that's becoming uh, straightforward. We have customers like Solway, for example, which is a large uh, 
uh, chemical automation company, and they are being able to build multiple applications with 400 plus users inside the company and deliver a lot more automation inside the organization than they would otherwise be. So you, you kind of touched on this with the, you know, the different modules and capabilities and functions within an organization, but when I think, when I think about that VCR analogy, I mean, it's doing one thing, you know, and that's pretty simple. How does that apply? Uh, and again, you kind of touched on it, but, but it seems like IT is much, or business is much, much more complicated. But, so this actually works. Yeah, no, I think it works. I mean, we provide a lot of uh, out of, uh, kind of templates and uh, system uh, examples uh, in, in, in the no-code tooling, mm -hmm. uh, as well as there are a lot of complexity which is built underneath the covers, which is completely hidden from the user perspective, right? So when, when I, I'm building an application, I'm still getting the power of the cloud, I'm getting the power of our underlying platform, the scalability, reliability, the security, uh, the integration, all that kind of stuff is brought into this uh, tooling without you having to learn any of those uh, things. And that really is where the power comes in and it's flexible enough that you can kind of pretty much do any kind of application development. I would not build a full-blown uh, e-commerce site with it, but I can do a lot of typical day-to-day -day kind of applications like vacation approval or things you might want to do for mortgage lending. I was telling a telehealth app for doctors and so we're seeing a lot of, like the, we had customers who were doing this for hospital bed tracking during the COVID current crisis going on, right? Where they want to know what kind of PPE is available, how many beds are empty. So tracking that at hospital level, at the healthcare departments, all that kind of stuff were done very, very quickly and powerfully than uh, they were otherwise would have been able to. Is there a concern amongst your customers about privacy, governance, uh, compliance, security? with you know, all these citizens, citizen developers, how do you ensure that those fundamental edicts of the organization are preserved? Yeah, I think that this is a similar uh, thing than any other uh, system we would make available to our customers in the cloud. We guarantee that all their data is only available to the people who are allowed to based on the privileges and the security profiles and everything else. So there's no really any kind of fear from the system perspective that you will get access to something which you're not allowed to. You do log in, you do have to have an account, you do have to have all the relevant credentials before you get access to it. Same thing with privacy, we make sure that nothing is shared with anybody who's not allowed to. So we apply the same tenants, same kind of uh, rules to any kind of uh, data or information we keep in the cloud for any other application development. All we're doing is abstracting it out and making it easier so that everybody who wants to uh, build things don't have to learn 20 other things to kind of get going. So the, the ability to do this thing faster and quickly is there, but all the underlying philosophy and principles still remain intact uh, in, into our products as well. Right, makes sense. You, you guys obviously, you have this API first mentality. I've heard about things like API Gateway, uh, yeah. Apogee uh, uh, data capabilities. Uh, automating app sheets. Can you bring us up to date on some of those innovations? Yeah, yeah. so we have, we've been, uh, you will uh, see a lot of uh, updates in this area. So we've been innovating very aggressively. Of course, we have the product called Apogee, which is a market leading API management product in the industry today. It does the full life cycle of APIs, including uh, testing, development, publishing, monetization, uh, security, all that kind of stuff for APIs. And we have thousands of customers using it today. Beyond that, what we've done is uh, we've added a lot of ability from that stack to kind of expose APIs and consume them through AppSheet. So we have an API data source for AppSheet. So it's easy for you to find APIs and build an app is one. Second, we also release something uh, called API Gateway, which is a very high performance, uh, low latency, uh, cloud native gateway running on serverless. So a lot, of a lot of applications are built on serverless platform nowadays. And if you want to now manage that through an API layer, we provide a gateway on top of uh, Google Cloud so anybody can also use it very quickly and easily as well. So that's another area which we added. And the third thing which we are announcing is something called AppSheet Automation. So as I talked about AppSheet for app development, we also now adding a lot of workflow and business process automation underneath the covers uh, as part of AppSheet. That's something we're making available to a customer so they can automate a business process and connect things together very quickly but also get the value of the automation in their application as well. So those are new innovations, new releases we're adding to our platform as part of business application uh, 
uh, offering uh, so that anybody can take advantage of it. I mean, I love this trend because it, to the extent you can enable, I mean, this is the holy grail. I mean, if, if you can enable business users, they're closer, obviously, to what's going on, closer to the customer, uh, and, and they just, they can respond much more quickly. Are you seeing, uh, for instance, a user you know, builds an app, using an app sheet, are you seeing, because of the you know, API richness, are, are you seeing other innovation around you know, those occurring? Are we at that point yet, or are they still kind of islands of, of, of no, business no, I processing? Think the, 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 um, um, the, the scope of usage is growing very fast, right? Uh, we have more than 400,000 users on AppSheet now building applications. Um, uh, thousands of thousands of applications been built on it with millions of users kind of using it at the end uh, from the logging in and using those applications as well. So I think the innovation is happening very fast where they're connecting different things as well as now building an ecosystem. Even in Solway, as example I was giving you, the multiple apps are built by multiple departments and they're kind of bringing those ecosystems together into reuse, uh, be able to kind of find new use cases around it, those kind of things as well. Are organizations coming back to you and say, hey, we love this, but you remember when you, we first started spinning up VMs, it was so easy. <laughs> are you seeing organizations say, hey, we need better line of sight on that. It can be a catalog of what we're doing or, yeah. or marketplace. Are you, are you seeing demand for that? Yeah, so we're seeing, no, I think there's a lot of uh, reuse, like we have partners who also build, uh, build applications and put that into our, into our uh, marketplace as well. And, and then we also seeing a lot of interest from its solution providers who build applications on top of what you might have as modules and deliver uh, to uh, our end customers as well. So now there's a lot of interest in that regards and there's a lot of good examples coming out and we're seeing a lot of uh, ways of bringing some of these things together as well. I mean, how does machine intelligence, AI, how does it fit into you know, your whole agenda and strategy and what, what does it mean for a customer? Yeah, I think, uh, as you know, Google has been innovating and has been one of the top AI ML vendor out in the, uh, in the marketplace today. And we have definitely taken a lot of uh, advantage of that innovation and experience in there. So for example, when I talked about automation, a lot of the automation in AppSheet is being done using AI ML technologies Google has built uh, in terms of predicting the, the, the way the customer is going to use the application, how they're going to be able to take a business process and connect them together. A lot of that things have been built using AI ML technologies uh, at Google Cloud. Uh, beyond that on API management for our operational uh, dashboards and operational monitoring. So make sure that we can give you five nines of availability. We kind of really use a lot of AI ML technologies to understand anomalies, uh, figure out where the issues might be and predict those things and make sure that we're kind of fixing those things in advance before things go down, right? Uh, same thing with security, uh, abuse usage, uh, make uh, any kind of uh, DDoS kind of things or whatever, maybe the security issues as well. We use a lot of uh, AI ML capabilities to make sure we're monitoring and securing our systems as well. Have, so we're not the, really in the middle of everything. Right. Has the pandemic, you know, the last 150 days obviously has changed things. We talked about digital transformation being accelerated. How, how are you thinking about sort of the go forward? you know, as a result of, of the, the you know, post-isolation era? Yeah, I think this is probably going to uh, be the, I don't think this is going to, uh, once we get out of the COVID situation, whenever that happens, some, the way we work and way we operate will definitely change than what it used to be pre-March, right, in a way. Uh, uh, so I do expect a lot more of uh, video conferencing, for example. I do expect a lot of digitization. I do expect a lot of automation requirements. Uh, everybody trying to be more efficient uh, and sharing things, working remotely, those kind of things will continue as a trend. So from our perspective, the work we're doing around API management, around digitization, around digital transformation, around app sheet, automation, all those things are probably the right things for the right kind of future uh, where this technologies and te uh, offerings we do in Google Cloud, as well as uh, other things we're doing broadly will make a big difference for everyone. Yeah, you know, recently I want to kind of end, just get your industry perspectives. I, I recently I, I wrote a piece, did a video just on the enterprise app space, kind of the systems of record. And, you know, these are entrenched companies. And, you know, even you see some of the new SaaS startups, but they're, you know, large companies and done very well. 
I was trying to sort of noodle on, you know, where does the potential disruption come? Where's the new innovation? And I think some of the things that we're talking about here, this no code, cloud, I mean, obviously you guys play in the application space, but it seems like a part of your strategy is to enable developers to really build you know, new types of applications and, and maybe, maybe that's where the next wave of disruption comes, perhaps in vertical industries, perhaps with this no code. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, you're right. I think the, the productivity in the collaboration space, no doubt, is going through a huge transformation and change, right? I mean, Google been in the forefront of it with G Suite. If you look at some of the numbers and the metrics in terms of video conferencing and just collaboration in general has been going through the roof in terms of usage. Uh, app sheet combination with that, for example, right? So if you're building an application, you're building, uh, doing video conferencing, I might be able to build a telehealth app very quickly and easily. So that's where the no code and collaboration, for example, and productivity becomes part of that story. Similarly, as you said, the industry solutions where you probably heard some of the innovation we're doing in that area by specific industry uh, with business processes. Again, adding an API layer underneath the covers to connect different systems together and then publishing that through an application like AppSheet through AppSheet becomes again a very much uh, great thought out solution and very easy to kind of provide that to our customers as well. So uh, changes in productivity and collaboration, changes in no code app development, having a platform to connect all these things and make it easy to uh, adopt is really a big part of our story as we move forward. And that's the reason why we kind of increasing our investment in the business application platform and it's kind of core to a lot of things we're doing. We did an acquisition of Looker, for example, for business intelligence. And that's an important part as part of business application platform to be able to provide intelligence to what people are doing, what data you have, to be able to do self-service reporting, and then publish that to on a dashboard as well, uh, which might be created through app sheet or custom, doesn't matter, but we provide you that whole end-to-end -end, uh, onto it. And then technology like Anthos kind of ties it together to give you multi-cloud as well as a uh, uh, hybrid kind of delivery mechanism. So your flexibility of choice, how you deliver and run those systems. Yeah, I love that Looker example for sure. I mean, it's, we're basically seeing the democratization of, of business apps. Amit, thanks so much for coming back in theCUBE. It was, it was great to see you. Hopefully sometime soon we can see each other face to face. Yeah, I look forward to it. And thank you again for having me. And thank you for watching our continuous coverage on theCUBE of Google's Next on air, nine weeks of coverage. Keep it right there. We'll be right back right after this short break.